Hello and welcome to Aaron Boy's channel. My name is Brian and I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you have no hair since you pulled it all out trying to locate a leak in your pond with no success. Pond leaks can be very frustrating and difficult to find, to, to, basically to the point where you just want to throw in the towel and A, fill in your entire pond or B, have it entirely replaced. The reason pond leaks can be so difficult is because you have no idea if it's just one leak or multiple leaks. If you haven't already, I would recommend that you watch my first two videos. How to locate a leak in your pond part 1 and how to locate a leak in your pond part 2. If after trying these troubleshooting techniques in these two previous videos you are still unable to find the leak in your pond then you'll want to try these advanced techniques covered in this video. The majority of all leaks can be fixed by using the techniques in my first two videos but I'm fully aware that some of you will still experience leakage after you try those techniques. This means you're going to have to go that extra mile to locate that leak or leaks in your pond. These are all techniques that you can do on your own to save money. So with that aside, let's get into the advanced troubleshooting techniques. Let's start with this video with uh, <coughs> sorry about that. Let's start this video with the determination that your pond certainly has a leak. We've ruled out placement of the liner, we've ruled out placement of the rocks in the waterfall, which can lead to water loss due to excessive splash that projects the water outside the liner. We've also ruled out evaporation, which was covered in my first two videos. We've also determined that your pond does not lose water while the pump is off. So that leaves us with the piping, skimmer box, waterfall box, or streamliner. The first two steps require that you leave the pump off to perform the troubleshooting. We will be testing the skimmer box for a pressurized leak and testing the piping and waterfall box to see if they hold water. To do this, you will need to determine the outlet size of your pump by disconnecting the check valve or piping connected to your pump and measure the inside diameter of the pump outlet. There are many different types of pumps out there, so the outlet sizes will vary from a quarter inch up to six inches. But for many of you backyard pond owners, the diameter will fall between one and a half inches to three inches. Your pump outlet also, <coughs> your pump outlet configuration will also determine what fittings you will need to perform these troubleshooting techniques. You can also determine the outlet size if you know what type of pump you have. If you know the type of pump you have, you can go online and search for the outlet size. You also need to know if it's female threaded, which is threaded on the inside, or male threaded, which is threaded on the outside. In this video, we will be using an Aquascape 3000 pump, which has a 2 inch female threaded outlet. The piping is 2 inch flex PVC pipe. So let's start with the pressurized leak in the skimmer box. It's possible that your skimmer box may be leaking only when the water is running. The pond liner itself is connected to the skimmer box by a plastic wear faceplate, which is attached over the liner and then onto the skimmer box using grommets or self drilling, self tapping screws and sealed with fish safe silicone. It's possible that the water could be leaking through this area of the liner during pump operation which draws high volumes of water through the area but you would not be able to tell this since the skimmer box is submerged halfway into the water and is buried in the ground so basically on a dry day if your skimmer box is not leaking the only part of the skimmer box that should be wet is the inside of the skimmer box and not the outside of the skimmer box none of the pond water should be touching the outside of the skimmer box to test for a pressurized leak in the skimmer box, you will need fittings that will allow you to connect an additional pipe to your pump with the end of the pipe exiting back into your pond. Not into your stream, but into your pond. This setup will bypass the existing buried pipe, the existing waterfall box, and the existing stream. This way you're not wondering if the, it's the existing pipe or waterfall box or stream that's leaking. In this example, the Aquascape 3000 pump has a 2 inch female threaded outlet. Simply remove the check valve or existing pipe that is attached to the pump and then attach a 2 inch PVC male adapter to the pump's outlet. <clears throat> now keep in mind this is only for a Aquascape 3000 pump. A lot of your pumps are going to have different sized outlets. Now, what you don't want to use is Teflon tape or PVC glue. The fitting is only temporary and for troubleshooting only. 
Next, you will need 2 inch PVC piping. You can purchase this in 25, 50, and 100 foot rolls. I would suggest purchasing a length that would go from your skimmer box up to your waterfall box, or if you know someone that you can borrow it from, that would be even better because then you'd save some money. If you have to purchase a pipe, it's going to cost you anywhere from 80 to 110 bucks, depending where you get it, but it is needed to perform these troubleshooting te techniques. That price quote I'm giving you, that's basically on a, you know, a 50 foot roll. Uh, if you go up 100 feet, it's going to cost a little bit more. But I would assume most of your uh, backyard ponds here, just through experience, that you know you need less than 50 feet of piping. So remember, we're just troubleshooting the skimmer box for a pressurized a pressurized leak, and do not want to run the water through the existing pipe or waterfall box or stream. Once you attach the flex PVC pipe to your pump and position the exiting portion of your pipe in the pond. You will want to mark spots around the pond to indicate the current level of your water. Once this is done, simply turn on your pump and leave it running. Next you will want to locate the pipe that exits your skimmer box and goes up to your waterfall box. This is the pipe that's buried under the ground. In this scenario, the exit location of the pipe in this skimmer box is located in the back of the skimmer box as pictured here. Simply plug in the plug this end of the flex PVC pipe using a rubber test plug as pictured here. What's nice about this, partic this particular test plug is that as you turn it clockwise, it'll expand more than two inches, providing you with a tight with a watertight seal. This type of test plug comes in smaller and larger sizes to accommodate the size of the piping you may have. Once you have inserted this test plug, simply go up to the waterfall box and start filling it with water using a garden hose. Make sure to go back to your skimmer box and confirm that the test plug is holding water within the pipe. Once you determine that the test plug is tight enough to hold water, then continue to fill your waterfall box until it can't hold any more water. Once you have accomplished this, then wait 24 hours and come back to see if you lost water in your pond or in your waterfall box. Make sure before you perform these tests that you will have more than 24 hours without rain, or it can skew your results. Depending on the outcome of both of these tests will determine what your next step will be. If you lose water in the pond, then your skimmer box is leaking. If you lose water in your waterfall box, then your piping or your waterfall box is leaking. The point is that it narrows it down where the leak could be. If neither one leaks, there's still the possibility that you have a pressurized leak in your piping or a pressurized leak in your waterfall box, but we will not make that determination until we perform further tests. So let's say both tests pass with flying colors and you lost no water. Now you have to test the stream for leaks. This is where that long piece of flex PVC piping you just purchased or borrowed comes in handy. What you need to do is break your stream into sections depending on the size as shown here in this picture. In this illustration, we've broken the stream into three sections. To get started, place the exit portion of the flex PVC pipe in section one. Run the pump for 24 hours and check your pond level to see if the water has dropped. If it hasn't dropped, then move the piping to section two and run for 24 hours. Continue this process until you discover where the leak, until, well, keep doing it until you notice your pond level starts dropping. This will help determine what part of the stream is leaking. If your pond level doesn't drop after checking all the sections, then you need to check out your waterfall box. Plug your waterfall box with a test plug and run the piping into the waterfall box. Turn the pump on and let it run for 24 hours. If the water drops after 24 hours, then there is a leak in your waterfall box. We already know that there isn't a crack in your waterfall box since we already tested to see if it holds water. Therefore, the leak must be occurring where the liner is attached to the waterfall box. The liner that is attached to the waterfall box is attached by a lip that is held in place with grommets or self-tapping, self-drilling screws. In this case, you will have to remove the lip and do some minor maintenance. Of course, the difficulty of this task depends on how many boulders are stacked in and around the front portion of the lip. You may even have to purchase larger screws or bolts so that they will take hold of the existing drilled holes. 
you'll want to use Teflon tape and re-silicone the liner around the opening as well. Over time the screws can break or the silicone wears away allowing water deep or allowing water to seep in behind the liner while the water is running over the lip of the waterfall box. Just like the skimmer box, the only portion of the waterfall box that should be wet during a dry day is the inside of the waterfall box. You will also need waterfall foam to help redirect the water and provide a more watertight seal. If you have a large waterfall stone on the lip of the waterfall box, the waterfall foam is also used as an adhesive to keep the stone in place. Make sure to wear rubber gloves when applying waterfall foam. If you get it on your skin, it's going to take about a week to come off. If you get it on your clothes, it's not going to come out. Last but not least, let's say the waterfall box did not lose any water after performing the test. If that's the case, then you might have a pressurized leak in your buried flex PVC piping. The cost of fixing this will determine how many trees and bushes you planned, you planted over the buried piping and if you want it all removed or not. In any case, new piping will be required along with digging, which is the last thing we want to do. Hence, if you're going to purchase piping for these troubleshooting tests, you might as well get a piece that is the same size and diameter and long enough to replace the current piping. This is Brian with Aaron Boys, and I hope this video helps you find the leak that you're looking for. Please subscribe to my channel, and you can learn more about Aaron Boys at AaronBoys.org. We provide over 55 services, including landscape, administrative, graphic design, cleaning, house sitting, and so much more. As time goes on, we will cover other topics related to Aaron Boys services in our videos. Thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day. And don't forget to subscribe.